Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about fonts. Now I already have the code here and the files already saved. So let's begin. What is a form? A form is a list of fields that a user has to fill in to finish something. For example, if you're trying to create an account, you have to fill some fields like username, password, email, in some cases the bio and all of that. So how do we create a form in HTML? Well, from the name, we have to use the form tags, as always. Now, to add the elements, unlike the others we have seen, to add mm, basically most of the elements in a form, there is one tag that specializes in it. Input. That's right, input. That's all. That's what it's called. Now, now that input is a self-closing tag. So to create different types of fields, we would have to set the type. So type equals to what are we going to set. We have several things that can be achieved with input. So let's first use the text box. So now let's see the result. There you go. Oops. A text box. Now I can enter text in it, a whole bunch of text. And as you can see, as I reach the limit of how long this box is, it just continues adding more text. Now let's see if I wanted to add a button. For that I use the input tag. This time I said type equal to submit. Yeah, that's an awful name. So for submit you need a value. We can set value to just well cap submit. You can set it to anything you want, but I'll just set it to that. If I enter a bunch of text, no, not that. If I enter that, my name, and click submit, you see the text has gone. And why did it zoom? Yeah. And I'm not sure if you noticed the difference, but before I click the submit button, the URL is this. If I click the submit button, there's an addition to this URL, this question mark. That question mark means that a form has been submitted. So I've added an extra bit of code called name equal to this name. So if I enter my name here and then hit the submit button, look, along with the question mark, it said name equal to submit. Apparently, if I hit the submit button, it would actually give what the value is right here it does not actually take the value from the text box if you wanted to do so you'll have to set some extra settings Let me do that. okay what's the next form of input Radio buttons. A radio button is has a list of choices, each one having a circle. You can only select one circle at a time. 
So I'll just do this. Yeah, you learn. So to create a radio button, you need input and then type equal to radio. And then you have name, what group does it belong to, and value. Refresh this. Now, note, I have to close this. It won't actually add the text. It will add the circle, but that's it. That's all it will do. It will just add the circle. And yeah, A is a terrible choice. There you go. So while it creates these circles, it does not actually show the text. To show the text, we'd have to do something like this. There you go. Let me put new lines for each one. There you go. So if you want to add text to the buttons, you have to add them like this. And I can't see it. No. The next one is a checkbox. A checkbox is similar to a radio button, except you can select several different values at a time. Proceed. Now this is the exact same form and looks exactly the same as the previous one except the circles are now something like rounded squares. I can select several options at a time. While in the previous one I can only select one. Oh, I can't select several. What's next? Well, a text field. So, I mean a text area. A text field is a single line. You can only put like this. You can't press enter or something. So, if you want to use the enter key, like enter several lines, you need to use the text area. Now, text area has its own separate tag. Well, text area. This is a self-closing tag. And inside, this is optional, but you can put the rows. How many rows do you want it to display? No, no three, fine. And note that unlike the input, you have to have an extra closing. You'll see why later. Now I can use the enter thing and look. When I had too many lines, it added the vertical scroll bar. However, if I'm entering just one whole line, it will just move on to the next one. Okay, yeah, that's enough. Now, the reason 
text area has to have separate tags for opening and closing is that in between you can enter something in if you put something in between the two that will be displayed right here now let's say you want a big text field like instead of this size you want more well that's simple you just have to use the size attribute so the size attribute and set it to whatever you want you see that yeah it didn't increase much but it did increase if I wanted 50 Whoa. Now I have a lot of space to enter stuff. Now note that because I have kept values and names for the radio buttons and check boxes, look what would happen. I'll select A, B, and C. Hit submit and look at that. Uh, I don't think it's that visible, but you can see that. Uh, along with that name equals submit thing, it selected letter equal to A from the first thing and the letter equal to B and C from the second thing. Yeah, um, I better change that. So actually, if you want to include the text from the text area and the text field, you'll have to include this name equal to name. The same name equal to name. And in case if you're using things like checkboxes and all, you need to include the value field as well. Otherwise, only the name field is required. So, if I enter something here, and if I enter something here, and select option A in the first one, as well as A and C in the second one, and hit submit. Look at that. Well, it's better I show it like this. It said name equal to Smaran. The letter, the first letter is A. That is from the first options. And in the second options, a and C and then in from the text area what I've entered so if you look here this percentage 0 D percentage 0 a which repeats again is actually a special format because you cannot have enter and all of those special characters in a URL they'll use these characters. So thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.